Let's flip this around so I can see myself. Ryan here, Ecuador, all over here. And today I'm talking about Quito. Quito, the city I live in, and really one of the coolest cities, the capital of Ecuador. It's a really fascinating place, very unique, and I got some interesting facts to throw at you. So let's get right started right now. Go. Like Y'all don't know people like this. Y'all don't know people like this. Y'all don't know people like this. Quito is named after the Quito tribe who occupied this area way back in the first millennium. Exact dates are not known, but it is widely believed that Quito is South America's oldest continuously inhabited settlement. The Kingdom of Quito was officially founded in 980 CE by the Caras tribe after they took over the Quito tribe, but it wasn't officially declared a city until March 14, 1541, and that was after the Spanish came in and took over. It's rumored that the Spanish chose Quito as the capital because they heard there was an Inca treasure buried somewhere around here, and they were hoping one day that they would find it. The official name of the city is actually San Francisco de Quito, and that's named after the much-loved Saint Francis of Assisi. The Spanish ruled for over 300 years until May 24, 1822, when Quito won its independence in the Battle of Pichincha. After that, it was actually made a part of Colombia, or what was then called the Republic of Gran Colombia. Gran Colombia was dissolved after just eight years, and then Quito became the capital of the newly formed Republic of Ecuador. The elevation at Quito's main square is 2,800 meters, which makes it the second highest administrative capital in the entire world, the first being La Paz, Bolivia. However, Bolivia is one of those rare countries that has two capitals. They have their administrative capital and a constitutional capital, which is in Sucre. So therefore, technically, Quito is the highest constitutional capital in the world and the second highest administrative capital in the world. It's located in the Quito Valley. It's a very long, narrow city. It's 50 kilometers from north to south and just eight kilometers from east to west. Quito's northern city limits are actually just one kilometer away from the true equator, making it the closest capital city to the equator. Quito was the first city to be named a UNESCO cultural heritage site back in 1978. If you look at the reference numbers, it's number two. So it was the second overall one to be filed out of any site that UNESCO's done. UNESCO also claims that Quito's old town is the best preserved and least altered historical center in all of Latin America. Quito is the only capital in the world that's located right next to an active volcano. Pichincha Volcano is just eight kilometers away. Its official city bird is the black-breasted puff-leg hummingbird, which actually lives on the side of Pichincha Volcano. It's classified as critically endangered with only 300 left in the wild. Malaria, which has decimated populations across the world, has never been a problem in Quito because the altitude is too high for malaria transmission. For the past six years, Quito's Mariscal Sucre International Airport has been named the best airport in South America by the World Travel Awards. The airport only opened in 2013. Their old airport is located in downtown Quito, which made it very dangerous, a very difficult airport to land in. 300. 100. Now that airport is a giant park where you can jog on the runways and you can go and visit old hangars that still have planes in them. The only problem with Quito's new airport is that it's quite far away from everything. The old town is 45 kilometers away, about an hour drive, but as the crow flies it's only 20 kilometers. Ecuador's terrain makes it difficult to build roads. However, they're working on a solution for this. For a couple of years now, they've been talking about building the world's longest cable car, a 14 and a half kilometer cable car to the airport. The problem is it would cost $236 million and Ecuador is pretty much broke, especially now after the pandemic. Quito does have a subway system. It's just not being used yet. A 23 kilometer metro system started being constructed in 2016. Earlier this year, they reported it was 95% done. However, the coronavirus has halted construction. In an effort to preserve Quito's historical district, they're only gonna build one stop in that area. While they were digging that stop, they found some historical remains. So they actually had to shift the whole thing, move it two blocks south in order to not further disturb the remains. Quito's Parque Metropolitano is the largest urban park in South America at 1,376 acres about 500 acres bigger than New York's Central Park. There are over 40 museums in Quito featuring everything from money to water, and there are 24 monumental historical churches or convents. 
Personally, my biggest concern with living in Quito is just not having enough time to see it all. There are just so many little tucked away shops and side streets and markets, and I just don't know if I'll ever be able to get to it all and see it all and just develop a strong connection with the city. But what can you do? I guess you just gotta keep exploring. So that's what I'll do now. I'll go explore. See ya. Bye. Three, two, one. Then what happens? Yeah. Before I wanna buy myself, I don't wanna hang around y'all. Pray for good health. One day I'm really gonna fall. Fuck around and buy the home mall. Breaking that cake. Flexing 700 in the bank. Not a superhero, I'm safe. Look at my face. Look at my grades. Don't match up, no.